Yeah. I don't know. It's been like six years later now and everything. I've been meaning to talk about this. Oh, man. I've been meaning to talk about this for the longest time now. Maybe three or four years. I don't know. I always wanted to talk about Ben Affleck's Batman, right? I know some love him, some hate him. I remember like a couple years ago before I got started on YouTube. Maybe I was started on YouTube. I don't remember. I got into a spat with some goofball in the YouTube's comment section about a video about Ben Affleck's Batman. I think the video was done on uh, some female YouTuber video. But word to the wise, don't waste your time arguing with people in the comment section. It would drain you. But the simp, I had to get one over on the simp. But we were arguing over the purpose of why Ben Affleck's Batman was killing and acting a fool in Batman vs. Superman. But before I get into my interpretation of what Batman's purpose is in the DCU, feel free to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share, and don't mind dropping a comment down below. I am all open ears. Disclaimer, for anyone out there, I like parts of this movie and I hate other parts of it. And this is my interpretation of what I thought Zack Snyder was trying to do with the character of Batman. And my interpretation is not the Bible. Now, don't get lost with this one. But Luke Skywalker is the Anakin Skywalker is what the DCU Superman is to the DCU Batman. A source of hope for the ones who lost the way. A source of redemption. But now, uh, let me explain. Now, I want to bring up a particular scene. It's a scene with Superman meeting Batman to level with him before they start fighting. Here's two men going in two different directions, both getting played by a non-bald Lex Luthor. I wish Zack Snyder would have used Lex Luthor better, instead of this really light Lex Luthor, but that was whatever to me, but anyways. Bruce Wayne, in the beginning of the film, was a broken man, mentally and emotionally. Something we have seen and something we haven't seen before. We've seen a physically broken Batman before, ask Christian Bell that. So the backstory. We learn Bruce Wayne has lost his parents, of course, the same old story, but he has lost Robin. It's still unknown to me if Dick Grayson or Jason Todd or even Tim Drake was killed, but a Robin has fell to the hands of the Joker. I prefer to be accurate, so I'm going to think Jason Todd. Plus, we get bits of Bruce not being in a good place, with various scenes like Bruce drinking, taking pills, Alfred saying he needs to start living, and also Alfred saying, Bruce might be the last of the Waynes. Gotham City, of course, is still a fictionalized version of every major city in America that tends to vote in a way that's not pleasant for a city to functionalize. Yeah. Anyways. And recently, Bruce Wayne saw Wayne Financial and Metropolis fall to Roma by the hands of alien gods with enough power to take over the world. With that being said, I think the collapse of that building made Bruce snap, completely abandoning all his good intent he ever had when it comes to being Batman and abandoning his fight for justice. Now he wants to destroy what others see, a symbol of hope for the world, Superman. To Batman, Superman is the absolute evil, and he goes unchecked. And he's not wrong in a sense. It would be hard to trust someone when the immense power probably can take over the world. But people have put their trust in Superman. After he stopped the destruction from General Zod, Superman has this Christ like appeal to him, to the humans, an alien putting his life on the line for humanity. The similarities Christians have with Jesus putting their trust and faith in Christ. But what does Batman think? Nope. Nope, not gonna happen. This sucker has to go. And his desire for the end of Superman is pushed more after that nightmare dream he had. And plus the destruction on Capitol Hill that was actually created by Lex Luthor. So now Batman knows he has to get rid of Superman. Bruce also tells Alfred this right here. This may be the only thing I do that matters. As for the man is still. He's struggling in this film. Not knowing if he's right for Earth. Having the internal struggle plus figuring out why Batman is acting a fool, beat up and blindly killing the criminals in Gotham. Clark's eternal struggles are intensified after the Lex Luthor bombed the Capitol building during that hearing. And he's really starting to wonder if he's truly needed on Earth. 
if he can't save the people around him. But you know what? Pause for a second. Pause for a second. Time out. Time out, ref. <laughs> now that I think about it, Lex Luthor, it may not be the accurate Lex Luthor that we all know from the comic books or even from previous, um, let's say, media. But he's actually a genius. He set up the whole Capitol hearing, right? With the senator. Having the senator set in that meeting up. He knows who Bruce and Clark is. Sometimes that's not, I wouldn't say sometimes, but it's not well explained in the theatrical release of this film. But given that that former Wayne employee that had the bomb in the wheelchair, and also knowing how to intensify Bruce's rage and loss of hope, I say it's quite genius. All right, back to the main course. Later. All right, Superman hears about Lois and Martha Kent being kidnapped. Nice forced to fight Batman, yada, yada, yada. Um, talk on the building, whatever. So now I'll go back to the scene with these two fight. And a couple things are pointed out about these two. To summarize what Batman was saying to Superman, Superman, as we all know, he has the strength of seven gods. Maybe demigods. He has all that strength and power. But he's still not brave enough, according to Bruce. Proven to us, yeah, as you know, Superman is either hit with the red sun or kryptonite. He has no powers. He's useless. Just the man swinging for the air, but still, he does have heart. That's bravery. But here's the drop that Superman proves that I just said to Batman a couple of times during that fight. Even as Superman is an alien god, he's still more human than Bruce has ever been. I wouldn't say ever been, he's been a better human lately. And he proves to Batman, and what people think is probably the worst scene known to man, and poorly crafted. Save Martha! Like I said, I have to agree with most people about the Martha scene. It's clunky. And it kind of takes away, but I, but it proves that Superman was a human, and he, he loved humanity especially his foster mother. Bruce was so caught up in his anger and rage, and I think most of us humans have experienced when something just makes us so angry and we get so caught up, we have this blind rage and we're sleepwalking in anger. But Superman also proves that he is a god, but also, more importantly, a man that is brave. He was brave enough to die killing the fake doomsday but i'm sorry though this is a side note using the deceased body of general Zod for a platform for doomsday was dumb but i get where they was going because doomsday is actually a kryptonian that was engineered many many years ago on krypton way before the birth of jor-el in kal-el anyway superman takes the spike to his heart and with the death of superman batman starts feeling the type of way we see this during the clark's funeral Bruce is starting to change. To him, he failed himself. He failed Alfred. He failed his family name. As well as Clark. Because Clark actually stood for something. He stood for justice. Peace in the American way. We see Bruce continue to change in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And by the end of that four hour ass movie. I'm sorry, it's long. Bruce has become more optimistic open a man freeing from his guilt more open with other heroes in the world and now he's all goody good with clark buying clark's mom's house back and giving it back to her the type of things we have seen bruce do in the past either as comic books or tv and film but he still has fears of a dark future via his dreams that we see towards the end of that film still also dealing with superman i do have to say you <laughs> I know people believe that Superman is good no matter what, but that is scary having somebody that has that much power. You never know what can happen in the future. But to add, to add to the visitation with the Martian Manhunter, he's more accepting of aliens with men's power. Even at this point, he has to be more accepting of Wonder Woman and Aquaman and the Flash. But he's still weirded out by those types of people judging by his body language when he is talking to the martian manhunter before we go on with the show how about you guys like share subscribe to franchise 60 tv even comment down 
in the comments down below. I'm also on Instagram at franchise underscore TV and on Twitter at TV underscore franchise. I also have two other channels if you guys are interested. Lone Wolf Adventure TV and Franchise 2 Sports. So, uh, yeah, subscribe to those three channels. And also like, share, subscribe on all three of them. I say subscribe three times. I'm done. Bye. But I do have to admit, Zack Snyder could have wrote this movie a little better than what he did. Maybe a little bit more. But studio interferes as well. But like, for example, I would have had Batman and Superman meet a little bit earlier in the film, got over their differences, and worked together to defeat Alex Luthor. Similar to what the 90s kids saw with the world's finest. Batman was aggressive. Batman was trying to find the Joker. Superman was on aggressiveness. And he was kind of on the defense because Bruce Wayne was macking on Lois Lane. And Clark was trying not to act jealous. But eventually the two got over the differences and defeated the team of Lex Luthor and the Joker. Now, this is kind of not too much off topic, but I'm sure people got caught up in trying to follow the Dark Knight Returns storyline, trying to imply it to this film, but word to the wise, and I learned this a long time ago. Studios, writers, directors, only you pieces of comic book storylines. So I learned not to get too caught up in writers applying comic book storylines to film because it's never going to work the way you think. But in conclusion, I think it's up to DC and Warner Brothers and even Ben Affleck to see this version of Batman's Endgame, if it's possible. I, for one, have been opening up more about Warner Brothers since they start changing stuff around. I did boycott it seeing their films earlier this year. But to summarize the DCU Batman, it's a story of redemption. I think most of us like stories of redemption. They can be good. I think that's why some of us love the story of Anakin Skywalker. Now, as for the other stuff about this film, ain't even the DCEU in total. I'm not getting into that. I'm not doing that. But DC has some repairing to do if they want to continue with the DCEU. But uh, this has been my interpretation of DCEU Batman. I ain't saying this is the Bible, but you guys are free to think what you want to think. But tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. I gotta go. I have more videos like this on the way. G. Willikers, Batman. Damn, this universe can't get right. Don't expect the days of our DCU. Because I'm done. I quit. Renegade on the way. Hey, make sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, too. What are you waiting for? Just do it. It's free. Duh.